Hello and welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Side Stories. Hello. I am here for the wonderful occasional co-host Casey. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. Anytime. We will have you on the show anytime. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to lap needless praise at your feet there. Sorry to start out. But uh, I think our last episodes, if it's been a while since anyone's listened to this show or has heard any episodes of Casey on there, I think the last one we did was on Ghosts, it was? Was that the last one? Oh, no. Serial Killers. That was the last bit of episodes that we did together. Wasn't that the same one? Wasn't it a ghost and a serial killer? Oh, I think you're right. It was the same session, but I think serial killers came later. Oh, yeah. I think that's how it was. Yes, because serial killers we did at your new place, whereas the ghost one was actually at your old apartment, as was cooking. Oh, yeah. So those are all the episodes we did together. I would highly recommend, if you have not seen those episodes, if you want to go back after you listen to this one, if you want to check out more. She's very good. She's natural at podcasting. We always bounce off each other very well. That's what happens when you know people for an exuberant amount of time. That's fair. Since the late Pleistocene era or whatever it was, whenever we met. I have no idea. (laughs) I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. (laughs) Well, anyways, today on the exciting episode of Side Stories, we are going to be talking about one of the most infamous, wonderful, and possibly crazy emperors of Rome, Caligula. Yes. Because it's about time this show, which again, cannot die. Nothing can keep this show down. It's about time we talked about our man Caligula. Mm-hmm. We already talked about Domitian one time. That was me and Darian. And that was a fun episode because the more I learn about Domitian, the more I like him. Because he, he has the opposite problem of Caligula. Domitian was a guy who had really bad PR, but was a very competent leader, it turns out. Caligula was someone that people, at least in the lower classes, tended to like, but yeah. had pretty bad PR and he probably deserved it, which we're going to get into right now. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I get that. So I guess before we truly start with the history, what is your view of Caligula coming in before we did the research and all that? So I think I probably learned about him when I took Latin in high school, my one semester. I whatever. didn't know you ever took Latin. Actually. Yeah, I took it with Darian. Really? For <laughs> one, like one year. Or he like, never told me that. I think oh, we might have been in the same class, but it was like, yeah, like the first year or like half a year you take a language mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I did it once and then I went back. <laughs> I should have so, taken Latin, apparently. <laughs> so I did like the bare minimum of Latin. But yeah, they talked about Caligula and how he's insane. And he put a horse in Senate. So <laughs> We'll be talking about the horse thing yes. later. But... Yes. But yeah, that's basically all I know, that he's a crazy man and he's somehow ruled Rome. <laughs> okay that's not a bad starting point so to give our audience here a little bit of perspective on caligula so this is the problem of talking about rome is that it's such a long winding story and it lasted forever and technically you could still go to a city called rome where people who call themselves romans live and a lot of the things from this era are still standing there and it's like you can always ask yourself the question did rome actually fall or did it just kind of recede into just the city it's weird i never thought about it yet they still call them romans like yeah. you know that makes sense. You, you live were... in Rome? Yeah. Wow. Uh, again, it's fascinating. And everything, like, again, you can go to the Vatican City, which is a country inside of Rome. Yeah. Which has the Pope, who has been around since the Roman Empire was a thing. Like, that's still there. True. That's True. Uh, technically an institution that got itself wrapped up into mm-hmm. the Roman Empire, and it's still there. It's one of the oldest institutions, if not the single oldest institution on earth, is the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And it will keep going another 4,000 years because nothing will get rid of it. Just like this show, it will not die. It will be here. We will be colonizing Mars, and there will be cathedrals on Mars. I guarantee you, one day that is going to happen. I guarantee you that. Oh, boy. I know. It's going to be fun. It's going to become like doom when the demons start coming out of the portals. We have to, like priests of shotguns fight them. That, that's a tangent uh, for another day. But oh, that God. will happen, too. That will happen. I assure you, doom will become real. But So, again, we're talking about Rome again. It's a long, winding story. So I'm just going to give the briefest of overviews of how we got to Caligula. This is a very, very, very short version. I'm just going to start at the point where we move out of possible mythology into actual history because the founding of the city of Rome, there were two brothers called Romulus and Remus, Mm -hmm. and they may or may not have been mythological figures. Are those the wolves raised by wolves? They were raised by wolves, yes. They were nursed by a wolf, and then they eventually founded uh, the city of Rome. Uh, Romulus ended up basically winning out over Remus, which is why it's not called Reem. It's called Rome. Uh, (laughs) Makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. Because if that had gone differently, assuming that they were real figures, which I think they were... At least I think they were probably real people, but how much of the story is real? Yeah. It's so lost in mythology, it's hard yeah. to say. But yeah, this reason it's not called Reem. That's the Reemson. <laughs> yeah. Th- <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you. Please hold your applause. Please hold your applause. But Add anyway. In clapping noises. <laughs> I should do that in like trumpets and like Roman yeah. soldiers. Huzzah. But anyways, eventually Rome becomes a kingdom. That's the kingdom of Rome. 
the kingdom is pretty cool to start out with, with Ramos being the first king of Rome, by yep. the way. And eventually, after a period of degradation, everyone says, okay, no more kings. No more of that. They found the Roman Republic. Republic lasts a pretty long time. This is usually where Roman history really starts, at least from how people study things. Because the, the kingdom is very neat, but the Republic is where it starts to really expand outside of Italy. They take Spain, they take Gaul, they take... This is where they're fighting in Egypt and all that. And this is a period of centuries, by the way. So yeah. very long. This is where they fight the Carthaginians. All those fun stories that you probably have heard about ancient Rome. And then, well, really, there's a guy called Sulla that shows up. We don't have time to talk about him today, because that was a kerfluffle that... Ugh, very, very long story. Anyways, after Sulla, <laughs> there is a, peer, a series of people who are trying to emulate him. Yeah. One of them being Julius Caesar, who we've mm-hmm. probably heard of. Yes. He has a palace in Vegas. Yes. yes. Great. <laughs> See, that's actually where he's from, if you didn't know. <laughs> I believe it. I know people are going to say me angry letters. I know he didn't actually come from Las Vegas. It's called a joke. You can stop whining. Do pagers work here? <laughs> Do pagers work here? I had a shirt that had a picture of Alan, yeah. and it said, does, does, yeah, does Caesar live here? I bought it at Caesar's Palace. I remember you wearing that. Yeah. I remember that shirt. I think I still have it, but it doesn't fit, but I still have it. Never getting rid of it. Uh, next podcast, you can just wear that. There you go. <laughs> Just throw it on. Why not? I'll, I'll find some Roman shirt too. We can do that next. We'll, we'll get like we'll get like the little uh, Roman setup of like the helmets and everything. You know, I thought about it. I was like, I could like do like the crown. You know, like the oh. flower, the like the, yeah, the, the laurel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, that'd be kind of cool. I thought about it. It did cross my mind. I was like, I don't have time though. Yeah, there's always time for making a laurel crown, Casey. Come on, you gotta get in the right mindset. You have to want to be an emperor or an empress, I guess in your case. Come That's on. fair. You have to have that drive for power. Speaking of drives for power, back to Julius Caesar, <laughs> who was not born in Las Vegas. Let's just say that. I know we can't. He was basically American, though. Let's be real. He was maybe history's first American. Just an outlook. I just want to say that. I'm not making a point there. I just thought it'd be funny. Anyways, so basically what happened is that Julius Caesar starts to challenge the institutions of the Republic. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he's preserving them, depending on who you ask, because, oh boy, opinions are still divided to this day if he was a hero or a villain. Essentially what happens is that after he amasses a huge amount of power, and after he brings a chair, not a throne, a chair into the Roman Senate and sits on it and directs Senate meetings, because he's totally not a king, guys. This is literally what he's doing, by the way. I'm not kidding. He called it a chair, and apparently everyone just bought that. And it's like, I'm not a king. This is not a throne. I am sitting on a chair. I am a director of the Senate. I am not a king. Things he right. actually <laughs> did. Yes. All right, Caligula. Yeah, not Caligula. All right. <laughs> this is Julius Caesar still. Oh, not Caligula. Sh- yeah. We're getting to him. Don't worry. <sighs> They're related, at least. Good. So, oh, yeah, true. Also, fun fact, before we start with Caligula, Caligula's name was not Caligula. It was actually Gaius Julius Caesar. <laughs> it was the same thing that Ju- Gaius Julius Caesar, the man we're talking about. So technically, they were literally built out of the same tree. One of them was just potentially crazier. But we're getting there. Caesar gets stabbed on the Senate floor. That ends, essentially, the Roman Republic because there's mm-hmm. a civil war with his adopted son, Augustus Caesar, mm-hmm. who actually himself becomes named Julius Caesar, and we just call him Augustus Caesar to keep it clear in history. Yeah. He was literally, they took on the name and everything else. So it was kind of like Julius Caesar was still fighting the Civil War, but different person. Roman history is confusing. And the names, the names are the worst part oh, of Oh, no, history. yeah. That's one thing I hated because, like, you had to pick out a name. I, I think I was like Clara. Ooh. I think that was my Roman name. That's a good one. Yeah. My but Spanish yeah. name was Javier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I should have taken Latin, apparently, is all I'm learning. It was pretty cool. But yeah, they, we did a whole thing about like names and how they took on certain names, and that's just more confusing than anything. We actually had an episode back in oh, the yeah. original yep. run about Roman names that Darian explained, which was very cool. Another episode I'd highly recommend. Rome always keeps coming back. But anyways, Augustus Caesar becomes the first emperor. Now, this is where our story really begins. Sorry for the roundabout edutainment way of explaining this, but I just wanted to give some feedback for everyone need who background. needs a little background. Yes. Our man Augustus becomes renowned as possibly one of the greatest leaders in human history, depending on your political leanings, but generally regarded as a pretty cool guy. And after, I think it's it's a pretty long time. I don't remember the exact number of years, but it's quite a while. I want to say like 40 years that he's emperor, but I might be wrong. He's there for multiple decades ruling Rome. Mm-hmm. And then he passes it on to this guy called Tiberius when he dies. By the way, the last few years of Augustus Caesar's life were utterly miserable because he was getting old. Everyone he knew and loved died. Either they were assassinated or died of diseases or died in battle or just... He was essentially an old man who was ruling the world but left completely alone when it came to Mm -hmm. uh, people he could connect with. I mean, some of the younger people and all that, but like the people of his generation right afterwards, they were all gone by the time he died. 
he was not a happy person when he passed away, unfortunately. That's too bad. I know. And then, speaking of unhappy people, Tiberius, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you read a little bit about it. Yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we really get into the story. Because before we talk about Caligula, I don't want to talk about Tiberius' entire life. But there's a lot here of Tiberius that I think sets up Caligula. Yeah. In fact, Tiberius was remembered in Roman history. I forget the exact historian who said this, but he was regarded as, quote, the gloomiest of men. Because he was someone who never wanted to be emperor, never wanted power, was essentially by the halfway point of his reign, completely done of the whole thing. And so he just went around essentially being a tyrant because about the first half or so of his reign, pretty good. Remember, he reigns for about 20 years. So they had about roughly 10, maybe 15 years of complete, utter tyrant who ruled by fear running the whole show. Yeah, because didn't he kill a bunch of people? Yes, he yeah, did. He like... In fact, he had he basically established a sort of kind of, I guess we would call it a deep state program now, of you, you would essentially rat out and accuse uh, other people in the empire, or at least in Rome itself, of certain crimes, and you could preside over that trial. And then if you won that trial, you got to take their stuff. So he basically started a sort of witch hunt kind of snitching Yeah, I was going to say, like, wait, this sounds like the witch trial. Yes, it was. This is literally what he set up. He thought this was great. Like, we're going to hold people down. No one's going to challenge my power. They're going to be too busy fighting each other. Mm-hmm. This was part of his, like, view of this is how I need to hold on to power. But the thing is, is that despite being an utter tyrant, he was pretty good at an administrative job. Like, he was good at being an administrator. Because when he left the Roman Empire, when he died, they were, they had, like, a full treasury like, their borders are pretty secure. Mm-hmm. Like, in terms of, like, material, great. In terms of, I guess, mental and spiritual health or whatever you want to call it, terrible place to live. Yay. And Tiberius, in fact, he named Caligula his successor. And he also named, and we're getting back into Roman names being confusing, His he had a successor that was also named Tiberius. So I'm just going to call him Tiberius the Younger for clarity here. Mm-hmm. But when Tiberius the Younger... Uh, was supposed to take power after Tiberius the Elder passed mm-hmm, away. Mm-hmm. He was still a child, Tiberius the Younger. And so Caligula, do you know how old he was, by the way? This is the question I always love asking people because a lot of people don't realize Caligula's age. Like when he started? Yeah. 20. He's a little bit older. He's about our age. He's about 25. Yeah, okay. You're, so you're, like, you're I, knew he was, I knew he was young. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. And he, spoilers, he did not live to see 30. <laughs> it's a short and fast story kids get buckle in we're almost there sounds like what you're aspiring to do well <laughs> no, I, I want to be even worse okay, you know? 26 <laughs> yeah. uh, again speed running political life i want to get into power i want to go completely nuts and i want to be like american caligula no, okay, no i actually don't but it'd be really funny honestly that wouldn't be the worst thing to be remembered as i guess it's better than not being remembered true in a sense yeah uh, they can at least, you know, all like they can erect a statue and everyone come and like spit on it and throw rocks and be like, I hate you. And also they stand there like, huh, but I still have a statue and you don't. This episode is going to be terrible for my PR one day. It's going to get dug, dug up if I ever run for <laughs> office. I, For future reference, this is called comedy. I do not actually wish to become American Caligula. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> so let's see. Getting back to Tiberius here. Other things I want to mention about him quickly. Again, he died pretty old. He had essentially a snitching system. Already talked about that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, yes. He seems to have known that Caligula had problems. So when Tiberius is handing off the empire, you know, Tiberius the Younger, who I mentioned just a little bit ago. Tiberius, the emperor, pretty much expected him to die. Like, if I die right now, this kid's not going to make it. But I'm Mm going to name him a successor anyways, either out of a rare show of kindness or possibly because, like, he's just supposed to out of some obligation. Or maybe because he wants the kid to die. I don't know. Tiberius is a really strange character. We need to do a whole episode on him at some point. But he seemed to have noticed that Caligula had very, very deep issues of some kind. Because Caligula, the only reason he uh, survived... Caligula's father was a man by the name of Germanicus. That was a nickname that was given to him after he fought the Germans. Mm-hmm. But we're just going to call him Germanicus because it's a lot easier to remember. And then his mother's name was Agrippa. Mm-hmm. Agrippa the Elder, specifically. So these two come together. They have a baby. They have a few kids, actually. And Germanicus passes away, I think, uh, either of disease or possibly being poisoned by Tiberius himself. Because Germanicus was someone who was in the contention to become emperor, right? Yeah. And Roman succession is a little bit confusing because sometimes you'd be taken, like, the heir would be your direct, like, son or something like that. But not always. It's not purely, uh, they call that primogeniture, where it's your firstborn son is the designated heir. They didn't have that. It had more of a... People in history studies call it like 
the imperial system now. I don't know if it ever had like a name at the time, but that's how imperial succession work is kind of, yeah, you can name somebody. Sometimes it's primogeniture. Sometimes you give it to the kid you like most. Sometimes yeah. you just let people take power. Sometimes you're stabbed to death and someone from a different dynasty takes it. It was a little bit chaotic. And I think the reason for that was that Rome really feared being called a monarchy even when it was because remember uh, they yeah. got rid of the monarchy you're not supposed to be a king you're supposed to do this so mm-hmm. like when augustus took power he called himself the first citizen the princeps mm-hmm. which is basically a title they used for the leader of the senate which was i think it was the princeps senatus or something like that so if you're a leader of the senate that's what you call yourself and he just shaved off the part that said senate and just yeah. said, i'm just the princeps princeps uh, latin's <laughs> confusing so i apologize i'm sure darian's angrily yelling at me somewhere <laughs> right now apologies so they're they're keeping up this air of we're still a republic, but we just need someone to guide the republic, mm-hmm. right? You see this happen in a lot of quote unquote democracies nowadays where you have a president for life or a dictator or things of that nature yeah. where like, okay, we're the quote unquote republic of wherever, but we basically have a military junta. Or we basically have somebody who's running the show and is our strong man. That happens a lot throughout history when the Republican values tend to go out the window, which Rome already had. So we get to Augustus. He tries to keep that alive. Tiberius kind of does, but... Again, it's a roughly, like, I think at least 50 years of living under Augustus and then Tiberius to the point where you get to Caligula. Mm-hmm. Many people alive, just from the sheer passage of time, don't remember what the Republic was. They have no idea. Like, they, they, they've heard about it somewhat, but yeah. they've lived underneath this emperor, two different ones now, for quite a long time. There's not many people who remember the Republic, you know, even existing. And even fewer, if any, who remember it when it actually functioned. <laughs> Like, you have to think, this was a long period of time. This was almost two lifetimes they've lived underneath an emperor now, at least judging by, you know, I I say emperor, but I know he was, I'm getting the time a little bit confused there because Augustus, when he was technically declared emperor, Mm -hmm. comes a little bit later than what I'm saying, but he was basically the head honcho and running the show before that. So just fudge the numbers a little bit for me there. But when Caligula comes around, right? Tiberius seems to know that, okay, this kid's probably got problems. Didn't he also almost die? Yes, he did because... So getting back to Germanicus, this is a very all over the place story, but that's 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 how it's <laughs> supposed to feel. So we're doing it right. <laughs> so Germanicus passes away. Agrippina, uh, Agrippa, sorry, Agrippa the Elder is like she thinks Tiberius killed Germanicus, right? Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> Tiberius, in response, essentially has her and her children and the rest of her family imprisoned and eventually killed or starved or they yep. commit suicide. It's a various number of deaths, mm-hmm. right? Caligula survives because he's young. And he's basically raised already the guide of Tiberius. Oh, okay. This is also where Caligula gets uh, uh, a lot of his experience of statecraft, by the way, is from Tiberius, which is explaining a lot, yeah. by the way, because yeah. when you're living underneath a tyrant, you're probably going to become a tyrant yourself, mm-hmm. which is sad because Germanicus was very popular, could have become the successor to Rome, uh, at least to the imperial system, and then he might have given Caligula a chance to actually become more of a moral upstanding emperor yeah and this might be a very different story if say germanicus had about 10 20 years of rule instead of tiberius the world itself might be very different who knows that's these are the kind of weird things history hinges on Mm -hmm. but unfortunately we didn't get that (laughs) we got the tiberius villain arc yay so caligula oh by the way i'll explain what caligula means because that was not his name again it was gaius julius caesar named after i believe it was his grandfather or great-grandfather or maybe grand uncle that julius caesar was I should have checked that before I started recording. I apologize. But he was a descendant of Julius Caesar. Oh, okay. They were related. Um, And so (laughs) when Caligula is with Germanicus as a young child, he's with the Roman legions fighting in Germania and all those sorts of things. The soldiers then dub him Caligula, which means little boot, because you had, I think it was the Calig... I can never pronounce the word, but it's like, it's basically Caligae or Caligas or something like that mm-hmm. is the boots that Roman emperors wear. Again, I didn't take Latin. I know I'm butchering it. I'm sorry. But <laughs> basically, that was the name of the boots the soldiers wore. Yeah. It was a cute little name. Mm-hmm. And that stuck with him. Apparently, he didn't like the name, by the way. Apparently, he thought it was terrible. And in fact, actually, in a lot of the histories, you see it, it's written as Gaius or Caius, even if a C mm-hmm. for his name. But a lot of the histories mentioned he was also known as Caligula. And yeah. Just because Roman names are insane, this is what he got stuck with. Luckily, he's not here to kill us right now, so. I mean, I think it's a very cool name. Oh, it's sweet. Yeah. That's the only reason that, like, I thought it interesting because I was like, your name's cool. It is cool. Again, it's a yeah. fascinating, it echoes throughout history. Like, mm-hmm. there's only one Caligula. There's, yeah. There's plenty, there's even plenty of, like, Nero's. There's plenty of Julius. There's plenty yeah. of people with all these different names. There's only one Caligula. Mm-hmm. There was never a Caligula the second. Yes. And that's, I guess when you uh, burn twice as bright, you burn out twice as fast. And so <laughs> that might explain that story. But yeah, 
Anyways, as Tiberius is, I do not mean to keep rambling on this story, but Tiberius is trying to set up Caligula here. He said many things that are very uh, eyebrow raising about Caligula. He said, quote, I am nursing a viper in Rome's bosom. Is that something a normal person says, Casey? I mean, now, no. But in Roman times, uh, no. The answer is no. <laughs> I mean, back then they talked weird. Like yes. that's just something you. They always talked in like weird. Um, oh, what's the metaphors word? and allegories? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how they talked. So like I and can see it back then, but now, yeah. I agree, yeah. but my point is not that he's speaking in metaphors because that's what they did. It's more mm-hmm. of. My my heir is going to ruin all of you. No one says that then or now. You don't say that unless you're kooky, usually. You don't say, I'm setting up someone who's going to ruin all of you. Also, another thing, uh, this is from Cassius Dio, the historian. He's quoting Tiberius. Yeah. He said, when I am dead, let fire overwhelm the earth. So he just hated Rome, I He apparently like. hated being alive. Yeah, I can see it. He's just like, I just want the world and everything to burn. Yes. I just want the world to end. Yeah, apparently that's what... Uh, now, it, we, the thing about Roman history is they may have been, you know, ex- exaggerating things a little bit. But with Tiberius, all of the sources I read, even the ones close to his reign and ones far out, seem to agree that he had something going on. And it's also telling that a lot of Tiberius' uh, friends and family died very young. Yeah, so he was probably just very depressed. Very depressed. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, I got thrown into this. and Yeah. Yeah. So as all of this is going on, we're going to get to Caligula now. And Caligula taking power, by the way, is very interesting because Tiberius, apparently throughout his old age, apparently he had, I guess, like cuts and like bruises and like boils on his skin that apparently kind of open up and all that. I wasn't quite sure to figure out what exactly they were, but they mentioned the sources that he apparently had some sort of skin disease or some weird thing where he would kind of break out. And there'd be periods where it looked like he was going to die. People would kind of get ready for, you know, someone to take power, which is probably going to be Caligula. Yeah. Tiberius would eventually wake up, and this may have happened multiple times. It's hard to say, but the final time, this is where we get into a little bit of hearsay in history. Tiberius is apparently, he's on his deathbed. Yep. Looks pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, oh, thank Jupiter, I guess. He's finally going to go. This is it. Mm -hmm. Caligula, apparently, (laughs) this just shows what kind of person he was, because Caligula's like, all right, we're going to do it. He's got all the people around him. He's like ready to take power. He's like, he's ready for it. We're going to hit the big time. Here we go. And Tiberius wakes up. Everyone's like, oh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. And Tiberius is a man you don't cross, by the way. Looking too happy, especially to take power from him, might be a problem. Yeah. So possibly, we're not quite sure if Tiberius just died of illness, like he looked better than died, or the story goes that Caligula apparently smothered him, either himself or someone on his order smothered him with a blanket and pillows or whatever else, and just they finally got rid of Tiberius. It's I mean, hard to say. I could see it go both ways, because it'd be like, just die already. Like, yeah. Yeah. Stop faking us out, man. Like, <laughs> just, just go. Let it go. It, yeah. Like, you wanted, you clearly wanted to die. Let's like, just yeah. get on with this. Which, obviously, it's not a good thing to murder people, and they're bad. Not advocating that. But you can understand why someone would do it. Yeah. So, Caligula has means and motive. But whether he did it or not, it's hard to say. But either way, we do know he benefited from him dying. So, I'll leave it up to the viewers to decide if he really was the one who did it or not. And again, that mm-hmm. story appears in a lot of the history, so it's not just something they made up later. It was at least a rumor probably about the time that it actually happened. So whether or not you believe it, up to you. See, now getting into Caligula's reign. So another small thing about Caligula I want to mention that keep this in mind. Keep keep this one in mind. This is a quote about Caligula when he was young, mm-hmm. and he basically started to serve Tiberius out of possibly de- true devotion, possibly out of fear too. And this is the kind of person you're going to get as emperor here. And the quote is, There never was a better servant, nor a worse master. Because apparently Caligula was known to be extravagant in even his youth. Yeah. Again, Tiberius himself, who was a tyrant, saw these things happening. He was like, this is who I'm going to name emperor. He's going to, you know, you're going to be awful. In fact, another thing he said about him, which I should have mentioned earlier, is that Caligula at one point mocked the memory of Sulla. And just a really brief aside, Sulla was the guy who came in, attempted to restore the Republic when it was going to fall the first time. This is all pre-Caesar. And he basically just murdered a bunch of people mm-hmm. and basically purged the whole system. And it's like, we had a hard reset. The Republic's back. It's going to run itself now. And well, though he also stayed in power too. He was kind of playing that game a bit. But Caligula mocked Sulla. And then Tiberius said that, oh, you know what, kid? I predict, not, not this exact quote, but I'm predicting that you are going to have all of Sala's vices and none of his virtues. <laughs> Oof. And yeah, how do you... Re- Oof. Did he ever recover? No. <laughs> no clearly not. <laughs> Oof. 
So now here we are. Caligula has been proclaimed emperor. Tiberius has either been smothered or died of disease. Mm -hmm. Here we Mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. We're ready for it. Party's going to start. And apparently this was met with much rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought this was going to be great. Like the old man, Tiberius, he's gone. He hounded us for decades. Like finally. And Caligula, according to the sources, started off pretty solid. Yeah. For oh, I think roughly six months, people liked him. It's usually the number given, though. Well, didn't he reverse a lot of what he did or Tiberius did? Yes, the main thing is he gave a, basically a general amnesty to a lot of people been exiled from yep. Rome. It's like you can come yeah. back. Yeah, it's okay. Mm-hmm. All's forgiven. And he also made a big show. This is one of my favorite Caligula stories. Of Tiberius again had a very big record keeping organization, mm-hmm. like every good emperor should. But he yeah. liked it for you know the snitching thing that I talked about oh, earlier. Yep. You get all the informants. That was his big deal. Was informants about this, informants about that. Everyone need to know everything. You know, kind of. He was going full CIA before that was popular, <laughs> right? And Caligula's like, nope, I'm not even going to use this. He piles up all the papers and he burns it in front of everybody, right? Nice. Makes a big show. It's like, look, no more spying. We're going to have, <laughs> I guess, I don't know if he said anything about the right to privacy, but, you know, he went around like, we're, this is going to be fair. We're not going to yeah. do this. No more. You're all back. And he totally keeps the records for himself, by the way. He just burned paper. Wow. He might have burned some of the informant's papers by the way it's probably about him (laughs) yep (laughs) i was just about to say one would wonder right one wonders what was in that pile of papers he actually burned we'll never know yeah and that's how you know he's 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 already shaping up to be a tyrant but it's okay it's okay right this guy you know what he's got some popular things he's doing he loves the gladiatorial games Mm -hmm. he loves those and while that's a brutal blood sport people love it so you know there's that he also he also uh, does start a few decent building projects. He did like building. And actually, two of his biggest projects were very large aqueducts. So they're things that feed water into the city of Rome. Yeah. They're still standing to this day, in fact. That's pretty cool. So there, I believe there's four main aqueducts that feed Rome. Two of them were Sterner and Caligula, and I think they were both finished under his successor, Claudius, who we'll talk about a little mm, bit later. Okay. But Because one of them, I think, is the Aqua Claudia or something like that. I think the other one's like the Aqua Caligula something like that so, makes sense makes sense so caligula at least you know okay he built a few things he also built the temple of augustus and a few other big projects like okay it wasn't all bad he did do some good things mm-hmm. for rome and speaking of his building projects this is right about a time i should mention that tiberius left the roman treasury with i think it's quoted as like three billion like sesteres which is a certain kind of coin now i'm not sure if that number is actually true but that's what's given in the source mm-hmm. but either way he's got a lot of money saved up in his treasury yep Caligula's going to blow all this in like four years, by the way. By the time he dies, it's going to be like destitution in the Roman treasury. Just blown out the gates. Because, one, remember those aforementioned games? He would throw those all the time. Mm. And in fact, it would be like, the when I say games, I mean like chariot race, I mean the gladiatorial combat, I mean the fighting of bears and wolves and tigers and lions, oh my, in the, (laughs) in the, not Colosseum because that's not built yet. Uh-huh. But every other arena they have. Yeah. He's using it. It's extravagant. It's great. You know, he loves this. In fact, one source mentions that in chariot races, I think they would have like a really small number of heats for the races. The chariot race, I think, is still pretty long anyway. But, yeah. you know, they're going to have a number of them. Caliga had like, I think he, they said like 20 heats per race or something. So it was like an all day event of just like constant chariot racing. That's insane. Yeah, and he would... did this like regularly. Too. It's like NASCAR. Yes, it is. It, it was. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> this is the beginning of NASCAR, where they have like 500 laps. It is. <laughs> that's literally what it was. It was just constant racing, and that costs money. Yeah. Right to the... keep people there, mm-hmm. to actually run the race, to fix all the stuff that's in there. Like you're gonna have to bankroll all this. Yeah. And he does it because he's young and he's a young guy. Like I'm roughly his age. I can understand being a little exuberant occasionally. I am the world's most frugal old man in a 25 <laughs> year old man's body. But still, I can understand, you know, occasionally I buy muffins. <laughs> just occasionally. Just occasionally, you know. So I can understand wanting to blow your money on a chariot race. I get that urge. It's the masculine urge to blow all your money on a really dumb risk because it's fun. I get it. I understand. Yeah, so. muffins are really risky. Well, yeah. you're not the kind of muffins. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I, you I, know, I, poppy seed muffins are really risky. You know, they, if you get drug tested, <laughs> come back positive and you're like, what? Whoa, this is not, the li- muffin. not the muffin. <laughs> I only eat blueberry muffins, by the way. Oh, there you go. So you're I, safe. There's nothing risky about this. I am really just fronting. Unless as the you kids have say. feather muffins. Did you ever... <laughs> Random side note. There's a YouTube video of... Remember when like YouTube skits were like really big yeah, in like, high comedy. school? Yeah. And there was one about muffins and they were just like, oh, what are they called? Someone will know this, where it's like, banana nut. I know this video, yeah. It's blueberry. Like, yeah, it's blood muffin. muffin. <laughs> Star Wars muffin. 
I remember that yes. video. I have not thought about that in like almost Same. however many years. It came. I think I saw it on TikTok. And I was, <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, this is my childhood. I'm having flashbacks. Like, I'm having war flashbacks right now of like everything going on. All these old YouTube videos I would watch just came flooding back. Oh, man. But anyways, yeah, muffins. That's always a nostalgia trip. I wonder if Clicker liked muffins. Probably did. Anyways, I, you know what? Good qu- <laughs> Next cooking episode, muffins. Ooh. We'll have to figure out when muffins were invented. I don't know if they were actually a thing by the time Rome was around or not. But anyways, so <laughs> getting back to Clicker, he also loved theater. And that's always a bad sign in a Roman emperor because apparently liking theater is like the sign that you're insane. Or you're, that or you're just in need to marry an actress, which by the like, way, actresses at that time, basically prostitutes. So um, yeah, they had a big stigma against them because it was kind of true at the time. Uh, let me see if I can find it on my notes here, is that every time there was a uh, theater performance, he never wanted anyone getting up to leave the theater. This apparently drove him crazy. So what he did is that he halted all lawsuits and mourning so that no one would leave the theater early. So basically they didn't have a good excuse to leave. Like, you don't have a lawsuit. You don't, you don't have to mourn anyone at a funeral. You can't leave. <laughs> that makes no sense. I, okay. How long do these theater performances go? I don't know. Apparently, I thought they got to be kind of long when it was like Roman plays and all oh, that. Okay. So it might be like kind of like a half day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But apparently he hated that. Now, of course, that it comes from a later source that comes from Dio. So it might not be something he did. But it's it's so specific. It's like who would make that up, right? Yeah. Like who just makes that up? So it, I kind of want to believe that one. <laughs> yes, let's see other things about Oh, this is also one more thing I want to mention about the the games he threw. Mm -hmm. He also, this is again a direct quote from Dio. He also caused 400 bears to be slain on the present occasion together with an equal number of wild beasts from Libya. This is talking about a certain uh, game where people would be fighting wild beasts. Yeah. Apparently 400 bears. How do you get that many bears? I don't know. How do you get that many bears into one place and like not get eaten? I I don't know. Maybe they were bear cubs, which sounds even more demented. Oh my God. I, I see i don't know that's the kind of thing where, like you hear that and it's like on one hand okay is that true on the other hand who would make that up right it's so weirdly specific 400 bears okay, Casey. i feel like it's not 400 bears i feel like they had a lot of bears but like either they have been raising these bears and like they had a bear farm and just <laughs> a bear ranch yeah bear ranch and they're just pumping out bears for these shows or whatever which they, i mean they might have been wait you said they came from libya uh, the the other wild beasts were from Libya. Oh, okay. So and like, how do you <laughs> transport them from Libya to Rome without like getting killed or killing the animals? Because that's probably like a month or so travel, maybe mm-hmm. more. Oh, probably. Well, I guess it depends. Libya again is in North Africa, so it, sh- it maybe it could be about a month. I don't know. It depends on what oh, kind of ship and yeah. all that. I don't know the exact uh, time frame it would take at that time in the Roman Empire because I think it depends mm-hmm. on ship technology and where you're leaving port. Logistically, just doesn't make sense. No, so. like it, maybe it could. Mm-hmm. I don't know about 400, but... 400 bears is a lot of bears. But the sheer fact that someone wrote that expecting people to believe it about you (laughs) says something about you, right? Or maybe a little bit about Dio. Who knows? It's hard to say, Mm -hmm. but I didn't just read Dio. Just for the record, I did read Swintonius. I did read Dio. And I also checked out um, Tacitus. Short note about Caligula's historiography. Tacitus is probably the best Roman historian that we have. Very, very good. He wrote very close to the time that he was writing about, so mm-hmm. even better. And he wrote his work called The Annals, right? Like The Annals of History. It's all exciting. Unfortunately, his work is missing. I believe it's made out of multiple books, right? Yeah. I believe it's books. At the end of book six is where Caligula, that's where Tiberius is dying. Caligula is being set up to take over. Yeah. Emperor. And guess where it cuts off? At the end of book six, and we don't resume until I think book 11. Oh, wow. All of Caligula is lost. Wow. And about, I think it's roughly halfway into Claudius is where it starts again. How strange. Well, 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 okay. See, when I mention this to people, this is the first reaction. And I agree with this reaction in spirit. (laughs) But I also have to say that that kind of weird thing happens a lot in history for some reason. Because this is at least after, he's writing after Caligula. He's not writing when he's alive. So he'd be writing afterwards. So it's not like Caligula censored or anything like that. But at the same time, yes, there would be powerful people who probably wanted to preserve some sort of memory of Caligula, possibly. It's a little bit late for that, in my opinion. But I think he is writing right after Claudius or even during Claudius. I might have that wrong. Mm -hmm. But okay, there might be a reason to censor those works. But sometimes we get these weird gaps in history. Like if you've ever read uh, Plutarch, Plutarch, which I can never pronounce correctly, but he was a historian who wrote a biography on Alexander the Great. Mm Mm-hmm. 
in the earliest sections of that work, he's talking about, I got my sources from here and here and here. And he names all these other historians. And we have like no idea who they are because all of their work is lost to history. Like, like we don't even know who these people are. Weird. Yeah. And that, but that's the thing that just happened, right? You have to write it onto whatever kind of paper, or whatever tablet, or again, depending on history and mm-hmm. location, whatever writing medium you have, you have to write it down. People have to hand make all those copies. They have to get preserved in a library somewhere or a monastery later on or wherever, temple, wherever else. And then that place has to not burn down. And then it has to survive to the modern day for us to read it. Cause there are works by guys like Cicero, who was again, a really important uh, Roman at the time of Caesar, mm-hmm. Julius Caesar. There's a lot of them. Uh, Julius Caesar's time. And he wrote a bunch of works and like a few of them are lost. Like we just don't have them. And it was, he was the most widely read authors of his day. He was like literally a best-selling author. It would be like if we had a Stephen King book that like came out and everyone read it. And then like a hundred or I guess probably like a thousand years from now, we just didn't have it. Like it was just gone. Interesting. It's literally at that kind of level. It's Which can happen. It's just, it's weird. It, it's so strange. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. How, But it's just the coincidence of... Mm-hmm. Oh, Caligula's time is just gone. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, now where people are trying to like ban books and oh, stuff. Yeah. So they're trying to like basically burn books. That's happened multiple mm-hmm. times that like they just like, oh, these books are bad. We're mm-hmm. going to burn them. We're going to get rid of them. So I get it. Yeah. And, and again, it happens. Like there's always been periods of book burning. There's also, again, just preserving that stuff is really hard to do. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't last that long, which is again, like early copies of, you know, religious or political works. Like we usually don't have the first copy just because the stuff like papyrus and all that doesn't last that long. Mm-hmm. You just can't get it. Yeah. So it, it that's the thing about Roman history. And that's when I give this brief disclaimer, I guess in the middle of the episode now that Caligula, again, may have been a really crazy, terrible person. And I, I really do think he kind of was and like for sure, actually, as the more I read these sources. But yeah. I also will admit that we don't have all of the sources. We got we can't dig him up and ask him how he really was or, you know, put him on trial or anything like that. So we are talking about a guy who he can't defend himself and yeah. didn't have many defenders. But at the same time, we do have archaeological evidence. And boy, there is some very interesting evidence, which is a good segue into my next bit where when Caligula takes power, another thing he wasted money on was a basically he built a bridge to I think it was a temple of Jupiter for himself. That only he could use, or at least was just specifically for him, so that he could go to the temple and not be bothered by anybody. And so it was, I think, from his palace to the temple. Yeah. Huge bridge. Like, he doesn't just, like, a normal person walk over there. Like, like no. a walking bridge. Yeah, like, I want a big old bridge where I can just go and talk to, you know, my gods. Yep. Apparently by myself. And for a long time, apparently people thought this was, like, a fake story to defame him. No, it was real. There's evidence that there was some sort of bridge or walkway or, you know, yeah. whatever you call it that went there. So, yeah, apparently he just did that, which, I mean, maybe it shows religious devotion, but it could also be because he's crazy and wanted people to not bother him and spend a bunch of money on that waste of time. And I don't know. Another one. This is a good one. This is maybe my favorite one. You ever heard of the Nemi ships? Nemi ships. Yeah, or maybe it's Nemi. It's N-E-M-I. No, I have not. Okay, it's named, they're named after, like, where they were found, which is Lake Nemi. I was going to say Nemi yep. in Italy. Uh, so they were these huge vessels, mm-hmm. right? And they're written about, I think, in some of the sources about Caligula. And for a long time, people thought they were fake because their width, right? It's like over 200 meters or 200 feet, sorry, 200 feet. Not quite as long as meters, but still very, Mm. very, these are girthy. These are wide ships. Uh, In fact, the best comparison I found online, by the way, is that it's of a modern Airbus, I believe specifically an A380, is that wide. So it's the wingspan of a modern plane. And by the way, that's a double-decker plane that can fit at max like 800 people. That's insane. Yes, this ship is supposed to be that wide. And like, I think it's, I forget how long it was, but it's pretty sizable. I think it's like not quite as long as the plane itself is. Yeah. But just have that image in your head of a modern, huge jumbo jet. Yep. That's how big this, gotcha. this boat of wood is made out of. And this thing is decked out in statues and bronze and all these other things. And it is like, it costs a ton of money and there's two of them. And he puts it on a lake. So that it can be his part. They call it a pleasure barge in the records. Basically, the man had a yacht. Yeah. And he threw crazy parties on the yacht. Like wild. Like people are running around. There's stat- There's like marble statues on this thing. There's like gold and silk and all these other fancy items. Mm, like goodness. you just come get the, go into the shindig. And people Ooh. think they're fake, right? Because mm-hmm. who would believe this? Yeah. In fact, uh, at the time, I, I, found, I thought this was funny. When people were doing research onto this, there were stories that Roman grain ships, which are you know supposed to be huge hulking freighters of yeah. you know, food, were, were like 130 meters in, or 130 feet in width. I don't know why I keep saying meters, sorry. But 130 feet in width. And people thought like, okay, that's pretty big. Like, yeah, it's yeah. got to be fake, right? Like, barges can't be. Well, then they found them. They found them. Ooh. 
And they were in Lake Nimi. In fact, actually, it's a really interesting story, which I won't go into the full thing, but they were actually originally discovered because there were rumors in the 1400s that there was something at the bottom of Lake Nimi. And of all people, a cardinal from the church sailed out. He's like, hmm, let's go investigate this, guys. And they're like, oh, look at that. Yep, sure enough, there's something down there. And they tried to raise it, but they so they got hooks on it, and they all they could do was really break off pieces of the ship. So eventually figuring out this was not a good idea. They said, yeah. okay, well, I confirmed there's a ship down there. Can't get it, but yeah. hey, guys, there it is. Mm-hmm. And then years later, when, of all people, another kooky dictator, Benito Mussolini, was in power, his goal is we're going to raise these ships. And by golly, they do it. They raised Caligula's pleasure barges, and they put them on display in a museum. That's hilarious. And we can confirm they're real, and we have photographic evidence. They were on display for, I think, about, I think, like, at least five to ten years. Like, this was a thing you could go and see in Italy. It was just in Rome. Huh. It was cool. There was a whole museum around this. And unfortunately, this little thing called World War II happened, oh, no. and they all got burned in the fires of the war. No. No, to this day, they don't know if it was the Axis or the Allies that burned them, if it was on purpose or accident. No one knows. So they're gone. But we do have photographic evidence, and we still have some of, like, like the, uh, I think the holders for the oars that are made out yeah. of bronze. They have, like, a dog's head on them. They were really um... ornate things. They're still there. So there are artifacts you can see from these ships. And you yeah. can see the photos, but unfortunately, you can't go and visit them. But there's this really great photo. It, great in the sense that it's just so interesting to look at. Of Benito Mussolini and, like, his entourage walking past the ship and kind of looking at it, and they're full, like, regalia. It's like, there's some sort of historical like lesson going on here. I'm not quite sure what it is, but there, there's something going on here. Yeah. And I remember Mussolini wanted to restore the Roman Empire. That was one of his things. We're going to bring it back and uh, that didn't quite work. Yeah. So that's the story of the Nimi ships. Again, they were totally real. We can confirm. And this must have cost so much money. I mean, if they were that big and like getting supply. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, just think about just, just like if you're going to have a party at the caterer, right? You can't just have people on your boat and call it a party. Exactly. So you have to cater it. You got you decked it out in all these decorations, which are from probably the whole known world at this rate, all brought in here. Mm-hmm. Probably bought them at exuberant prices. Mm-hmm. Now you're floating on it. You have someone upkeep that ship for, you know, however long a 200 and th- like 200 whatever meter ship takes. I'm sure that's a fun job to have. <laughs> Hopefully they got paid well. Hopefully someone got something probably out not. of this. Probably oh, not. <laughs> Hopefully someone got something out of this. But yeah, this is just what he did, right? So now I've, I've talked a little bit about his kind of extravagance, right? Let's talk about his atrocities. Yay. Let's talk about the fun part, Casey, because that's what we're all here for, right? Is talking about how bad he supposedly was. Mm-hmm. The image I've given to Caligula is hopefully a bit fair in the sense that, okay, maybe he's just a young guy who was extravagant. Yeah. Probably had some issues maybe up top in the brain case, but, you know, okay, he's extravagant, but things were going okay for the first six months of his reign, right? Yes. He sounds kind of fun. Also, everyone I talk to about Caligula, if when I mention the boats, they're always like, if I had power, I would do that. It's like, d- do you want to? T- really? Is this what you would blow the like state treasury on is your own boat? Who would want a boat? I, I hate boats. Large <laughs> boats. Like, I'll go on like a lake on a boat, but like mm. cruise ships, absolutely not. That's not your thing? No, it doesn't make any sense. How do they float? <laughs> Freaks me out. Titanic scarred me for life. Like, literally, Austin and I talked about going on a cruise just for funsies. And I was like, I can't do it. I was looking up, like, stuff about it. I, like, I almost had freaked out. I was like, nope, I can't walk on this. Like, I'm... no. Not your thing? No, I I don't know why. It just freaks me out. Hmm. Like, I'm in the middle of the ocean on this massive thing. No. <laughs> just no. Okay, so we're not having the click of the party boat rebuilt for no, you. Okay, good, no. Good thing to no know. No boats. No boats. Maybe planes. I could probably do that, yeah. You <laughs> have a party plane. See, that's what people do now. They're private Learjets. So maybe... That's, an, that's a thing. Yeah. Like, people have party planes. Yeah. I'm sure it goes against a lot of FAA regulations about all that whatever. No I've one seen listens. videos. It looks insane. Hmm. Maybe people are taking a few notes from Caligula, and I never thought about this. This is something I'll, I'll circle back to. I've been thinking about mm-hmm. that. Is like, do we live in a world of potential Caligulas or not? I mean, maybe. It could be coming back, and they just don't know it. Maybe. There's Who knows? like There's that little something back there. There's always a there's always the little voice that's just going to it. Do it. Do the thing. So now we get to Caligula's downturn, which apparently, according to the histories, came after about a sickness where he was really sick and kind of like like bedridden, like looked yeah. like he was going to go. Wasn't it like meningitis or something? I, it's hard to say, obviously, to diagnose someone well, 2,000 yeah. years yeah. in the past, but it possibly could have meningitis. It, like, it meant like something to do with his head and it like affected him. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to psychoanalyze people or like be the doctor yeah. so far apart. But yeah. yes, it's, it is a going theory. So you're correct there. I, I just, my thing is like, okay, this guy was probably already a little loopy beforehand or extravagant. And it just made it worse. Yeah. Yeah. Or he We're had just... a moment where he thought, oh no, I could die. Like this is my first, because again, he's a young man. This might be his oh, first chance yeah. like realizing, oh no, 
Mm-hmm. I need to party as hard as I... Maybe he had the... Maybe he had a quarter-life crisis. Was Kling in the first quarter-life crisis oh in history? Oh, my God. He almost died, and he's like, you know what? I gotta change my ways, and then just became a horrible human worse being. Worse. By becoming worse. It was his villain arc. Maybe that's yeah. what it was. You're going through your Caligula arc. Maybe that's my Caligula <laughs> arc. Oh, man. I can hit mine. For the viewers here who maybe don't get that, uh, I, I've had this joke going on that 2023 this year, when you're hopefully listening to this. It, if you are in the future, he even better. I'm, I've had some sort of legacy. So welcome everyone listening in 2043. But um, I, I keep making my joke. This is my villain arc year where just by December, I'm going to be like the worst person everyone's ever met. And this is now apparently started people comparing me to historical dictators. So now I guess I'm Caligula Hitler or something like that. That's okay. I'll go to Caligula Hitler. We're going to, I'll, I'll stop you before that. If, that if, if it comes up, we, we're going to have an intervention. Be my better angel. That's all I ask of you. I'll try. I can, can I at least hit Mussolini? <laughs> he told that. Yeah, I, I mean, Italians uh, apparently don't have the worst view of him. Actually, he was in power for like twenty years. Just saying, he he made it a while. It just kind of got wrapped up in a war he shouldn't have been in. And not saying he was good, but just like yeah, he wasn't a complete moron, at least in terms of statecraft. But uh, that's for a different day, different story. We can talk about uh, Mussolini one day. But now, getting back to this is Caligula's villain arc. This is such a scared episode. I love it. This, this is exactly <laughs> what I wanted. This is good. So. One of the quotes, I think this one comes from, uh, it's either uh, Tacitus or uh, Suetonius. It's that Caligula was, quote, rather a monster than a man, unquote. Oof. Yes. And I can't remember, he may have killed Tiberius. So he might have been starting off pretty roughly. So now what we're getting into here is this either could be salacious rumors or absolutely true. And apparently Caligula had an incestuous relationship with his sister, Drusilla. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. And apparently there could be something to this for the sheer reason that apparently Caligula was very into the Ptolemies in Egypt. So the Ptolemaic kingdom of Egypt was basically Alexander the Great came through, right? Mm-hmm. And then his empire shattered. Ptolemy was the general that took over Egypt. And so that became Ptolemaic Egypt, which, oh, okay. by the way... Those are the, the last ruler of Ptolemaic Egypt to rule really in any way in their own right was Cleopatra, who Julius Caesar had a run in with. Yep. yep. Actually had a child with and all that story. Yep, yep. So we're getting into some pretty recent history for Caligula here. Mm-hmm. So he apparently he was a big fan of the Ptolemies, thought Egypt was fascinating, that sort of thing. And the Ptolemies were known for inbreeding. Mm. They kept it in the family. So mm, great. Yeah. So he may or may not have been inspired a little bit too much by that. Hard to say. I do know that some people who are around at the time, I think there's like Philo of Alexandria was at some of Caligula's banquets and doesn't talk about this. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that this was made up later. But again, it's such a persistent rumor. We should at least mention that sort of thing. Yeah. Either way, he had like, he was either very loving and devoted to his sister or he was very, uh, (laughs) with his sister. Didn't that also um, affect his like, basically his villain arc and his like sister die? Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. And he just went on a rampage yes basically. in fact about his sister dying i believe it was something to the effect of this is when he started to become pretty arbitrary mm-hmm. like if you didn't mourn her enough bad if you weren't mourning her bad like yeah or if you were doing one or the other you know, like it's very strange because i believe he tried to have her deified and like declared a yep. goddess yeah that sort of thing i think he might even build like a temple to her at least yeah, a statue think, of yeah. her I remember reading that, yeah. And so that was apparently very, very troubling to him. He also apparently had multiple wives that he kept divorcing, and yeah, that didn't go too well. He did have a daughter uh, with his final wife, who I have her name written down, but I don't have in front of me. I will come back to that in just a second. And he, I believe he named his daughter Drusilla as well, but I might be wrong on that one. But anyways, he had multiple wives, and he divorced n- numerous ones of them, and... It was, again, very uh, pretty much a rotation of women, it sounds like. Again, he was a young man with a lot of power, and, uh, well, that's how those things tend to go, unfortunately. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> apparently, apparently at his banquets, again, this is getting into the hearsay sort of thing. Yep. He would, um, this is, tr- this is supposedly true. I'm just reporting the supposed history here. He would have the women, and apparently the men too occasionally, line up and go past his uh, couch, and uh, he would do the thing where, you know, if he, one of them kind of caught his eye, he would do the, you know, kind of like, look at me kind of thing, like finger under the chin. Like, and then if he liked them enough, if he liked them enough, apparently you're mine now. And then they would go to his chambers. Later on, he would come out and he would basically rate them in front of everybody. And then, I'm not kidding you. This is what the sources say. Apparently, 
uh, he would also like it, this is be like if the husband wasn't invited to the banquet, right? Yep. Or the husband was out of town fighting a war or something like that. He would then issue official records uh, after he was done with the wife of their divorce. So he would then divorce the couple himself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's just demented. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, I had something. Now you lost me. You I'm lost sorry. Me. Well, because I was talking about like where they had people walk by. Yes. That like, mm. I've done that when like in you've raided people as they walk. No, you and be well, like, I like, like you. So like in the army, oh. they always have when the change of command, mm-hmm. they do this whole. They're in the yeah. ceremonies and big things. So you do this thing where you basically have a big parade and you march past. Like the either entering, yeah, it's entering like commander because mm-hmm. they're looking over what they have. So you all have to like you're marching, and then when you go by him, you have to look at him. Mm-hmm. So you're marching, look at him, and then as you pass him, you keep going. Mm-hmm. So that's probably where it came from. Like, oh, you're walking past your like leader. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be some sort of kind of perversion of like an imperial like military thing. Yeah, it's certainly possible. Also, the interesting thing is the sources actually mentioned that when he would kind of pull people's faces to them, it'd be like if they were trying to be kind of modest or like not look at him or. That sort of thing is he would be like, no, no, like you would just give me eye contact. Look at me. Like, and I Maybe. just, you can just, you could just see in your head this kind of like really demented young man just kind of like sneering at people, like just looking them dead in the eyes at that point. And mm-hmm. so, again, that might be total BS, hard to say, but just from all the sources that we know, he probably was a little bit of a uh, pervy person. Yeah. That bad, we don't know, but yeah. It's, something was definitely going wrong with him for sure. No, oh, yeah, hundred percent. So, also getting into more of his atrocities here because the list is very long. Woo. Uh, he was recorded as having punished one person uh, for another's crime by mistaking the name. So it's possible that someone had like the same name because mm-hmm. Roman names. Like, yeah. oh, you're Flavius, whatever. I thought you were Flavius, this guy. When he found that out, apparently <laughs> there there was like a beating was the punishment, and they found it like mid beating, right? Like, oh, that's the wrong man. You're beating the wrong guy. And Clegg was like, no, no, keep beating him. What the heck? And he said, quote, he deserved it quite as much, unquote. He's like, that guy deserved it. Nah, that's <laughs> All right. fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they never mentioned if the other guy got punished for his actual crime or not. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I have no idea. There's another one here, another demented story, is once there was a soldier who was being put to death, and he loudly protested his innocency in front yeah. of the emperor and everybody. And so they're, they're dragging this guy off to be executed, right? Mm-hmm. And clearly hears this, and he's like, no, bring him back. Bring him back. And so they bring him back. Cuts out the guy's tongue. You can go now. And then they kill him. Oh my him. God. The, again, these are the mm. stories that are going on. And then <laughs> he's also quoted. These are some of these are some of the quotes that have really gone down in history that are supposed that are attributed to him. One of them is, I scorn their hatred if they do but fear me, which is basically him saying, I don't care if they hate me as long as they fear me. And that is actually a quote from a famous Roman play. So it might be something they attributed to people yeah. later. But the sources are saying he quoted it himself. So Caligula may be quoting this play. And if so, he's quoting probably the villain. I haven't read this particular play. But yeah, that's pretty demented. So that's another one. And the other one. This is this is one where if, if, if any of you have seen the movie Caligula, which I do not recommend. Don't watch that movie. And I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just saying there's a movie about Caligula from the 70s. It's mm-hmm. a massive... It, it went down in filmmaking history for all the wrong reasons. I've never seen it. I've only heard of it. Not mm-hmm. going to watch it. But... Mm-hmm. Mm. This is uh, Malcolm McDowell plays Caligula, by the way. And I, this is the only scene I've seen of it because I think it's, I think someone showed me the trailer of this movie for whatever reason, which luckily doesn't have most of like the really terrible stuff in it. But I remember the line sticking. I remember how he says it, but it's, I wish the Roman people had but one neck, which is basically him saying, I wish I could get my hands around them or control them or even kill them all. Just like if everyone just had one, it'd be so easy. If just one, yeah, totally demented. Yeah. This quote is also attributed to Nero, by the way, who himself was kind of a demented person. So it might be that they've later attributed to a Caligula. Maybe Nero was quoting Caligula. Yeah. That's one that goes down in history as well. So how are you feeling about Caligula so far? What's the thoughts on him? He's a great guy. Uh, I see nothing wrong. (laughs) Nothing? No. Would you go off him maybe once? (laughs) Maybe. Not not, not on the (laughs) boat, though. No, no, I'm not on the boat. <laughs> have as much shiny stuff and food out there. I'm not getting on that boat. Not getting on that boat? Nope. <laughs> nope. I had to ask. I didn't even put you on the boat there. I, I thought it was funny. All <laughs> no, right, you're right. good. All right, all right. The, this is, okay, this is my actual true favorite Caligula story here. This is my absolute favorite one just because it, it shows, if it's true, it shows everything you need to know about him in one story. And remember, Caligula brought a lot of the exiles back to Rome, right? Yes. Now, he asked somebody who had been exiled under Tiberius, basically, how do you 
what what do you think of Tiberius? What do you think about me? Or basically asking him, okay, what were you doing while you were in exile? Yeah. It, it, the stoicists differ a little bit, but essentially ask this guy the question of, okay, what were you doing? Or what did you think of my success, my predecessor? And then the guy trying, apparently trying to flatter Caligula, so the story goes, says, quote, I constantly prayed the gods for what has come to pass, that Tiberius might die and you become emperor, unquote. Mm-hmm. At first, it sounds pretty nice. Like, okay, I was praying that Tiberius would die, that you, my old great emperor in front of me, you know, trying yeah. to kind of... yeah. You butter him up a little bit. And Caligula, you could just see him pausing when he hears this in your head. And after this, what he did is he sent emissaries from island to island of everyone who had been exiled. And the reason he does this, and I'll tell you what the emissaries do in just a second. So Caligula starts thinking, wait, if this guy's praying to the gods, that means that everyone I've exiled might be praying to the gods to kill me. And this scares him. And apparently, mm-hmm. this is something sort of stuck about where he had a great fear of the gods, mm-hmm. possibly due to kill who knows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so the emissaries, they go on from island to island, butchering all the people that he had exiled mm-hmm. so that they can't pray to the gods that Caligula can die because he's, he's that paranoid about that. Jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Also, also another story is that wishing to have one of the senators torn to pieces, I'm quoting Suetonius here, mm-hmm. he induced some of the members to assail him suddenly on his entrance into the house, that being the Senate house, I believe, yep. with the charge of being a public enemy, to stab them with their styles and turn over to the rest to be mangled. And his cruelty was not sated until he saw the man's limbs, members, and bowels dragged through the streets and heat before them. Sounds great. Yes, because again, he wanted one of the senators to be torn to pieces. And he's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stab him as he enters into the building and we're going to just drag him from the street for everyone to see. We're going to make an example of him. And that's the kind of weird thing that uh, modern dictators will do too. Like they will uh, kill people and kind of make an example of them. That's been I mean, throughout much of history. Do, yeah, they've been doing yeah. that all the time. Like, so that one I could believe, but oof, just shows again, truly a demented mind. There's another podcast I listen to. And they talk about like basically death of mm-hmm. like just weird like cultural things, practices they do. All stuff, and they did a torture one. Mm-hmm. And they talked about like being quartered. Oh yeah, or, yeah. That's what it makes me think of. They just took a horse and just... probably. <laughs> yeah, Oof. there's people are just yeah. Yeah, there's some truly demented ways to punish people, and mm-hmm. apparently Caligula, again, according to the sources, was a professional at this. I believe it. From what I'm hearing, I, he, who knows what was going on up, on up there? Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's the thing. Is like, if he wasn't crazy why does everyone have such a bad opinion about him, right? Yeah. And it, 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 at the very least, he's probably a bad emperor because he's very indulgent. He has some good building projects, sure, but he's probably really arbitrary. Mm-hmm. He's probably very extravagant. He's probably very cruel in a lot of ways. Yeah. And he's raised under Tiberius, who already wasn't popular, and he probably was raised to be like Tiberius, but younger and more energetic and worse. So you can see why people would dislike him. So even if these stories are embellished somewhat, there has to be something they come from, right? Yeah, exactly. They can't just be pure lies. Yeah. It's just for the sheer fact that all of the sources say something that puts them in a little bit of a negative light. Yeah, exactly. Even Tacitus, who we have barely any of mentioning Caligula, even still, like, the thing about, like, I'm raising a viper in Rome's bosom, Tacitus quotes that. So, like, at the very least, Tiberius apparently said that mm-hmm. and expected Caligula to be bad, which kind of leads me to believe that all these other stories might be true. Yeah. Just for the sheer fact that, again, their best historian has that little bit in there. What do the other guys have? And they're come, they came later, so they have sources they can pull from. And yes, a lot of them are from the senatorial class who probably hated Caligula because he was trying to empower himself yeah. to the detriment of their power. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they just wrote complete lies about the guy. So it, it's hard to say. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Mm, people usually don't make up that salacious of rumors about you unless there's some crazy thing you were doing. Exactly. Because usually they just call you a coward and stupid, and then you move on for your life and you don't get much of a record, especially if you're only in power for about four years. Mm-hmm. You really have to screw things up pretty bad to have people lie about you in this sort of way to feel the need yeah. to. And that just shows how much uh, <laughs> they really didn't like him. That's kind of the end I have for all of his atrocities. Oh, one more thing. I just found this one, one other note I almost missed. He used to complain uh, loudly that there were not enough public calamities like earthquakes and all that because he wanted to live in a time, I guess, of excitement and misery. And so he's like, oh, it's such a shame. Tiberius got to live through this and Augustus got to live through that. And we haven't had a good earthquake in so long. Oh, my goodness. And the- <laughs> it's just... Poor thing. I know. What a whiner. Though... Though this also does contrast, apparently earlier in his reign, there was a big, well, they use the word conflagration, which is a word for big fire, by the way. So there's a huge fire that burns through. And apparently Caligula, possibly even by himself, helped put this out. 
maybe? Uh, or at least his soldiers did, because it yeah. says he helped out helped the soldiers put out the fire. So it's like, did he just pay for them? Did he actually do it? Huh. And he apparently rendered assistance to people that were affected by it. So like, he apparently helped pay for like their housing and all that. So he apparently had some sort of generous side. Maybe that's why he wanted a disaster, so he could be like, "Oh, uh, I'm helping you." Like, "Oh no, we had a disaster." You're and a like, genius. Yep. He wanted better PR. Yep. Because then they'll come running to him and give him mm-hmm. more power. He mm-hmm. wants the Christ. That's classic dictator right yep. there. Is yep. You create the crisis so you can quote solve the problem. You've given yep. yourself more power. Maybe you're right. Yep. I didn't think about that. Very We're solving good. all the world's mysteries right now. Oh, <laughs> you're so smart. Oh boy, just the smartest. <laughs> if only I was so smart. If only. Oh, mm, no, I'm, well, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to do that to all our guests. I have to talk them up a little bit. Otherwise, they'll never come back. <laughs> <laughs> and another good thing he did, apparently, that I missed earlier, is he apparently put the power of elections back into the hands of the people and lowered taxes. Also, this is my, this is my favorite positive story about Caligula. Uh, D- Cassius Dio states that he planned a gymnastics event because apparently that's what she did back in the day. Just gymnastics, you know, was a big thing. It was a huge sport at that time. He paid for the event himself. He organized this whole thing. Yeah. He then, it says scattered tickets at the event. So I'm not sure if they were handed out or if he like tossed them off a balcony or something or whatever. I like to imagine he threw them out into the crowd because that's more fun and sporty. Yeah, yeah. And then he gave out prizes to everyone who returned one of the tickets. So he literally had like a raffle, but like everyone win. <laughs> that's just what he did for fun. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. It would be sick. It's like, <laughs> apparently I came out like super early in his reign. It's like, I'm bored. Let's have a gymnast event. Yay. Yay. <laughs> prizes. Yay. So I guess. You get a prize. You, you get a prize. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a prize. We're all going to be gymnasts today. Yay. Yay. And then later on, there's a report that when there weren't enough criminals to feed the lions and bears in the arena, he had a whole section of the arena thrown in, like the audience. He's like, yeah, oh there's not God. enough people to feed to the bears. You, this whole section, you're getting fed to the bears today. Um, Now, that one only happens in Dio, who is the latest writer, by the way. He's, I think, like over 200 years later. So that one might be a lie, but it's a pretty fun story. So I had to mention it. Because, again, that's also where the 400 bears things comes from. I don't know. So, yes. And now, any other thoughts? Anything else? Sorry, I know this has been me rambling at you about Caligula, but. No. I think you're a crazy man. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm the crazy man to tell you about the crazy man. (laughs) Hopefully, I'm a little bit nicer, but. We'll wrap up this story. Are you ready to hear about the end of Caligula? Are you ready to wave goodbye to this man? Might as well. Okay. So he lived 29 years and ruled for three years. 10 months and eight days. We have apparently the exact number. Hmm. Now, as it turns out, Caligula, I I forget exactly where he was murdered, but he was assassinated by this group called the Praetorian Guard. He is the first emperor they would ever kill. This would become a running, well, basically almost a running joke. It seems for roughly 200 years, almost 300 is occasionally they would just kill emperors. They didn't like, cause they were self-serving, corrupt and yeah. Yeah. Very, very, uh, interesting group. They were, again, the Praetorian guard was basically the Imperial guard around the emperor. There is personal kind of troops, sort of basically mm-hmm. security force. They were a lot of things, yeah. honestly, and they changed over time. So it's a bit hard to get a read on them. But at this time, they're supposed to be a sort of just personal guard for the emperor to use to, you know, for security and, protection and possibly fighting in combat as well yeah so kind of common thing that you see a lot throughout history but they had a very weird pension for corruption but this might been it might have been a time where um the corruption wasn't the reason they killed the guy hard to say because usually they killed good emperors or these people that were remembered as good emperors that shouldn't have been assassinated caligula however is one of the rare examples of a someone who is regarded as a very bad emperor getting killed by praetorians Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it might be this whole tradition started from a (laughs) necessary action of killing a tyrant and unfortunately they took it to mean they can kill whoever they wanted whenever they wanted in fact Joyful. fun fact later on the praetorian praetorian guard they actually sold the empire i'm not kidding you they killed the emperor and then they couldn't figure out who to have be the next emperor so they sold it to the highest bidder and man by the name of uh Didus julianus became emperor for about i think six months before he was killed by a general oh who was not God. happy about this. <laughs> yes, and also, uh, <laughs> we should do an episode on him someday, but yes, he bought the empire. They actually sold a, uh, it was like the size of Europe and the yeah. Mediterranean. They sold that. It was sold. That happened, yes. So, wow, just wow. <laughs> I know, right? That's a great story for another time. <laughs> but um, uh, luckily, they didn't sell the empire after Caligula. So what they did is they ambushed him. They killed him, his wife, and his daughter who was, I think, at most three years old, if oh. even, they brained her against a wall, apparently. Like, this was not a this was not oh a comfortable gosh. job. This was a... They went and they murdered that family. Oh, just He was apparently such a threat to them and possibly to Rome and everyone. They just 
everyone Jeez. got cl- I think this is on the street too. This wasn't even like behind closed doors. This was like in front of people. Wow. Yeah. It yeah. Because was- like they killed his wife and daughter to like make sure they didn't retaliate against yeah. his, their her husband getting killed. Yeah. They're like, well, we're just going to kill everybody. Yep. Yeah, it was a purge. He yeah. got his whole family purged. The first emperor to be assassinated, by the way. First one, and they just they clean out the whole house. A- except for, <laughs> I will now tell you folks briefly about Uncle Claudius. Because this is, I'm not kidding, this is like the nickname that everyone uses for him now. It was in the History of Rome podcast. It was on Unbiased History, which is the world's greatest comedy history thing mm-hmm. ever. It, it, a lot of it's not true, but it's funny. Yeah. So. Got got a rep on bias history. It's great, and a lot of people have just started calling Claudius, who's going to be our fourth emperor here. Spoilers, uh, Uncle Claudius, because that's what he was. He was Caligula's uncle, hmm. and he was, I think, a decent amount older. I believe he was in his forties or fifties. I want to say, and he was the guy that, because <laughs> he was around during Tiberius's time, right? Yeah. Because again, this has only been like three years of Caligula, so everyone yeah, remembers yeah. Tiberius. Yeah. And Claudius was the guy who's like he apparently had frequent like nosebleeds and apparently a runny nose and like possibly had like. He just kind of was considered, like, dumb, apparently. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Or at least not all there, or he might have had some social issues. Apparently wasn't regarded as a very strong figure. So Tiberius spared him for that reason. And I, I think one of the sources outright says he kept Tiberius, or uh, Cl- uh, Claudius, sorry, a lot of names, they, that he kept Claudius around because he thought it was funny. Like, because, <laughs> to, like, it was like a joke uh-huh. that he kept living, which how did he ever recover? Well, it turns out he became emperor, so our man Claudius recovered. I mean, good for him. Wow. Good for him. And the story goes that, after they, you know, kill Caligula, brain his daughter, do all that terrible mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. it's like, well, now what can we do? And this is a, this is the sort of thing where they didn't quite expect to get this far, <laughs> it seems, because the Senate is in one kind of one faction now, and the Praetorians are in the other faction, so they're kind of repping the military, and the Senate is repping the civilian government, yep. I guess, for okay. lack of a better term. Yep. And the Senate, and I think the Praetorians originally wanted to restore the Republic. Like, okay, mm-hmm. we've had this emperor thing going on, like, we're just going to go back to Republic, we're going to hard reset this thing, we're going to do that, right? Yes. And um, people are apparently pretty cool with this idea, at least in the Senate. Like, cool, give us the power back. That's going to be fine. As it turns out, while they're running around killing everybody, trying to purge out Caligula's family, Mm -hmm. our main man, Uncle Claudius, pulls the brilliant strategy of hiding behind a curtain. (laughs) He's in his house or palace or wherever he's living, and he hides behind a curtain. This apparently works for long enough for a random soldier who may or may not be a Praetorian himself. It's actually, the sources don't quite specify yeah. some say praetorian some say don't he could be a random foot soldier is taking part in this he could be a praetorian but he's running around in this area during complete chaos where no one knows what to do because the coup's going down right and he sees these uh these feet sticking out which ironically might be some uh military boots who knows what he was yeah. wearing at the time yeah. but it'd be funny if he was if caligula's successor was wearing probably Caligula. just like sandals or yeah something, something. Yeah. who knows but <laughs> he's like wait What's that? <laughs> and of course, like any normal human being, he whisks the curtain around. And there's Uncle Claudius, like, don't kill me. <laughs> and apparently, in this moment, this soldier's like, I have an idea. And he proclaims Claudius emperor right then and there. He's like, Ave Claudius. He's like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> and they drag him out. He's like, we got the emperor. Woo! It's like, this is what we're doing now, right? Like, he's the, clo- he's the closest guy. He is, technically speaking. Like, everyone else is kind of dead. Yeah. And it's like, either Republic or Claudius. And it turns out the military really wants that emperor thing because they have more influence then. Yeah. So we're Ave Claudius. Now is the time. So they drag Claudius away off to a camp. I think it's in like a forum, like a Roman market or something. I guess they just set up there now. I guess that's what they did. It used to be in Julius Caesar time, you couldn't even bring weapons across the uh, river into Rome. Now I guess they're just letting the military live there. I don't know. It seems like the rules just went out the window. Yeah. So in a short, like 50 year period, that completely changed. So this is what we're doing now. And so they're sitting there and the Senate apparently wishing to... um, aggrandize Claudius and bring back the Republic and like, hey, if we, you know, get in good if the guy who would be emperor, that gives us legitimacy, right? Be great. Mm -hmm. So let's have Claudius there. Let's have everyone there. We can reshape this Republic. It's going to be wonderful. So they send him a letter and he gets the letter and I kid you not, his apparent (laughs) response is, I would love to come. This is a little, this is a paraphrasing, but I would love to be there, but I'm being held against my will. (laughs) Which is basically him saying, yeah, I wish I could be there to see your new Republic formed. Unfortunately, I am stuck here and I desperately wish I was not. (laughs) <laughs> like, I would like to go home, please. Yes. So, as it turns out, mm-hmm. this actually starts the gears turning across the military and everyone else. Or now it's like, wait, if we get rid of the system we have now, we might lose our power. And due to that, eventually, like, hey, if we make Claudius Emperor, he'll work with us. And Claudius, I think, even makes some promises. And he actually starts politicking, right? And they make him Emperor. And it works. 
He's emperor for like 20 years and people actually like him. Oh my him. goodness. Yes, it actually worked. Oh, he wow. was really good at being emperor because he built it. He loved building stuff. He was apparently a giant nerd actually was his problem was he was just a socially awkward nerd mm-hmm. and he loved building projects. He loved administrative work. He was a public servant. It was great. It actually worked out pretty well for most people in the empire and yeah. So at least this all ended with a high note because Uncle Claudius got made emperor because Caligula was insane. <laughs> yeah. Because what, Caligula was like 29 when he died. Yeah. They could have had like 40 years of that guy. Oh, good. <laughs> if he mm-hmm. had played his cards right. But he didn't. He burned out really fast and uh, we got Uncle Claudius. So yeah, that's where the story ends for the day, as it turns out. So that's Caligula. Uh, do we have any final thoughts on him? I know this was a long, rambly, crazy episode, as it should be. Yeah, exactly. That's just Caligula, Caligula for you. He's... How do you talk about it? Exactly. You you just have to ramble. Because that's what his life is. It's just a bunch of rambles. And it's like, sounds so insane that it can't be real, but... What if it was? Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, there are things that are happening now that people 500 years from now won't even believe. And mm-hmm. they'll have video footage of it and they still refuse to believe it. Yeah, they'll it. be like, ah, oh, it's fake. Yeah, they'll say, oh, it's CGI or it's this or that. And it'll be real. Like, we're, it's so hard to tell what reality is often. Yeah, exactly. Especially when it's so far in the past. And even as someone who is a trained historian, such as myself, Mm -hmm. I'm sure this podcast made people uh, think that I'm lying, but I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) This is my rapid fire, fast, fun history. Like, it's so hard to tell. But at the same time, just given all the sources we have and the archaeological evidence we have and all these other things. Yeah. It's clear something was wrong with him. Exactly, yeah. How wrong, we don't know. Whether he was actually crazy or just a tyrant or both. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But... That is our man Caligula. He was a fascinating individual. There's a reason he went down in infamy. Maybe we're reading too much into it. Maybe he was exactly as the sources say. Mm-hmm. I leave that up to be all of you. You can be the judge. You can judge Caligula however you wish. <laughs> but I do have one more final thing to say. Because as it turns out, one of our favorite subjects, ghosts, of course, is related to this story. Of course. Because our man Caligula just cannot be kept down, as it turns out. Much like this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, they say that... His body was secretly brought to the gardens of the Lemian family. Uh, it was partly consumed on a hastily erected pyre and burned beneath a light covering of turf. Oh. Later, his sisters, on their return from exile, dug it up, cremated it, and consigned it to the tomb. So Caligula is buried in a tomb, right? This mm-hmm. is all from Suetonius, I believe. Mm-hmm. And before this was done, it is well known that the caretakers of the gardens were disturbed by ghosts, and that in the house where he was slain, not a night passed without some fearsome apparition, until at last the house itself was destroyed by a fire. With him died his wife, Caesonia. Yep, he was stabbed to death with a sword by a, a, a centurion. Yeah, so that's where Caesonia was her name. And then while his daughter's brains were dashed out against a wall. That's the exact quote. It goes from Caligula's ghost to mentioning these other two people died as well. So apparently his angry ghost came back. He just upset all of the ghosts. And they're like, why did you, who brought this guy here? Yeah. Like, so they, oh, wow. To the point where the only way to get rid of him was the house burned down either on purpose or maybe the ghost did it or it was natural. I don't know. But apparently you couldn't keep Caligula down. He was <laughs> so rotten, apparently. He caused... A paranormal event. I believe it. <laughs> I, I believe it. 100%. You know, that's the kind of thing. If you told me that five years ago, I'd be like, "Yeah, it's just you know history, blah blah blah." There's mm-hmm. playing this up. Now I'm much older and wiser. He's <laughs> like, "That's absolutely real." Yeah, of course. That's exactly what happened. Ghosts are real. Yes. Yeah, like I just believe that. I I think I've fallen into the camp of yeah, ghosts are real. Aliens, sure. Like I I'm actually more fifty fifty than aliens on ghosts at this rate. Bigfoot, sure, why not? <laughs> I'm more. I don't know. Like ghosts, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Aliens, eh. yeah. that's what I'm iffy on. But yeah. the ghosts. Probably. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it, it's like, yeah, go, sure, why not? I don't know what they look like or what they do, but yeah, they're probably real. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's not me trying to like push any sort of agenda or being like, I'm a paranormal, I can talk to ghosts. No, I've never seen a ghost. Probably don't want to, but like at this rate, I'm not really convinced by anything. It's more of, I've hit the point in my life where it's like, of course. Yeah. You, you know, as you get older, things just start to make more sense yeah. in certain ways. Ghost was just one of them. Maybe I'm the crazy one. I don't know. <laughs> but don't want to dive into that. And finally, if you, anyone would like to see an image of our person, Caligula, I would like to highly suggest my favorite artwork of him, which is if you look up a cuirassed bust of Caligula, it will come up. Mm-hmm. Now, a cuirass is basically your uh, chest armor. It's something that yep. you know protects the chest. And it's basically at the top of his head here. I, well, I would. Yeah, oh. I see it. Yeah. Okay, good. It's on the page. Mm-hmm. But I was going to turn my computer around, but then I realized we're looking at the same sheet. <laughs> so you can see Caligula here, and he's got the civic crown, which is a crown of leaves on his head. And he's got some laurels kind of hanging down beyond his neck. Mm-hmm. And just look at his face. He just looks like there's something, like he's kind of grimacing almost, like he's mad about something. His forehead looks big. Yeah, and it's not just the lighting here or anything. Like This is this is a pretty decent anatomical 
image of a human yeah. head. Yeah. So there, and the Romans usually did like kind of a warts and all strategy when it came to, at least in the early empire of making busts look like the actual person. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't romanticized. This is what Caligula looked like. Also, you'll notice a lot of the Julia, it was called the Julio Claudian dynasty, by the way, was his group of people. A lot of them had really big foreheads. It seems oh. to be an imperial trait. A lot of them had that. Hmm. And there's just something about this face where you look at straight on, you just kind of see something like negative about it. And I had that when I, I, before I even learned all about Caligula, like way back in the day, I remember seeing this bust and mm -hmm. thinking that. And I know it's obviously you don't want to read too much into art or psychoanalyze it, but you look at the other emperors, you look at the other people, you can kind of tell a little bit about them just from viewing it. Viewing it. Like, yeah, Tiberius looks kind of gloomy. Augustus looks regal and nice. Mm -hmm. And Claudius mm -hmm. looks like a big dumb nerd. And like, you realize like, maybe there's something to it. Like, it's a close thing to photos that we have. And you can read into photos. Yeah. For sure. And there is something positive about that too. You can tell what someone's thinking. What is seeing. that creepy thing on his chest? That like, is, I'm pretty sure it's Medusa. So that was a common visage. Uh, it might not, it might be like a Romanized version of it. Or it could be like a, could be like a troll or a giant. I'm not sure. I, I've mm. read a lot about this bus. No one's ever talked about that face, but... Mm. For the audience that can't see it, there's a... Looks like a woman's kind of... Looks like a witch. Yeah, it looks like a witch. And yeah. she's got this kind of like gnarly hair. I'm not quite sure if those are snakes. I don't think they are. But I know sometimes Medusa was drawn kind of like that. So that's my yeah. guess. And that was a really common image to have on mm. your chest or your shield to be Medusa. So okay. could be. That's my best guess. But as someone who is not privy to that information as I couldn't find it online and I don't work with this particular bust, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Someone in fine arts could probably tell you. So do some research, kids. I'm sure I missed something here and there. But Interesting. Yeah, there you go. So here we've come to the end of Caliga. That's all I got. My long ramble about the, which is when you read about him, this is literally how they do it, by the way. It's yeah. just like, and then this thing. Oh, yeah, by the way, this. 400 bears. His daughter was brained on a rock. Da, 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 da. Oh, also he did this and he gutted this one guy. And like, this is lit this is just my crash course. And if you want to read ancient <laughs> sources, this is what it's like. This is Caligula. This is this is Caligula. <laughs> that should be my show at Caesar's Palace. This is like <laughs> what? No one can leave until it's done. No one gets up in the middle of the theater. No bathroom. No bathroom breaks. There will be no no mourning. You're not going to any funerals. And there's no lawsuits. None. None of you have anything more important to do than see this. Nothing. <laughs> I demand it. Great. Just great. Be beautiful. Huge. Even. <laughs> I don't Stop know. It. <laughs> no. no you enjoy it that's why you're here <laughs> i saw that face <laughs> oh geez well those are my that's what i got you got anything no i think we covered it yeah <laughs> all right folks well tune in next time where maybe we talk about claudius or maybe we talk about something else who True. knows yeah actually i think i know what our next episode is going to be because i these episodes are going to be recorded a little bit in advance for everyone listening. So I don't know what order they're exactly going to come up with, but I think the next one Casey's going to be on is going to be our history of rig sporting events. Oh, yep. I think it's going to be the next one coming up. So we'll see what order they come out in, but hopefully I got that right. If not, I will cut this out and you'll never hear it. Or maybe I'll put it up and I'll just be a liar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, hopefully I'll get that in right order. So take care, folks. Do not do not be a Caligula. Oh, this is actually my final thought. Mm -hmm. Often when I mention stuff about Caligula to people, there's just at least one thing they're like, oh, I would do that. Or I would do this. Mm -hmm. Usually it's not the worst stuff. Yeah. You know, like the really big atrocious things. But it's like, oh, I would totally throw wild parties and all that. And it's like, does the partying eventually lead to the tyranny or can those things be separated? I think there's a point. Yeah. There's always a point, And usually people go too far. Yeah. It's like the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's a, See? That's, that's like, a comparison. He started off small and then mm -hmm. he got money. Then he started throwing parties and they got bigger and bigger. And, and he's then... not leaving. The show goes on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not leaving during the play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there we go. It's all the same story over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. History mm. repeats itself. In a sense, it kind of does. But I, I, I'm more privy to the idea that it, it rhymes, but it's not the same. Yeah. It's always something different. There's always something weird. But That makes sense. That And I got to say that apparently for a while, the people of Rome were actually liking Caligula in a lot of ways. So it just depends. Maybe they love the wild partying and the insanity and the indulgence and the wildness. Because again, the people hadn't lived underneath a respectable republic for a long time either. They've lived underneath authoritarian. So an authoritarian yeah. who is doing all the tyrannical things, but it's more fun about it, maybe you're willing to go along with that. How maybe. far corrupt can a political system get? These who are the knows? scary ideas you have to ask yourself. <laughs> and will we hit that point? Who knows at this point? I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. Anything is possible. So I'm announcing my candidacy for president right now. No, 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 no. Later on, kids, and I'll be a respectable ruler, hopefully. Or, you know, just, I don't know, speed run. One of the two. <laughs> speed run. <laughs> that's, that's the last I have for this episode. I'm going to cut it here. Don't be a Caligula. If you, please, please don't be worse. Be fun. 
Be fun. Mm-hmm. Don't be fun like that. Be fun in a different way. Have people read about you in a way that can respect you in history. Yes. Have a higher calling because you don't want to end up in the crowd like Caligula. Come on. You're meant for more than that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot to talk about the horse. The uh, horse. I forgot to talk about the horse. How can we forget about the horse? I forgot horse. to talk about the horse. I'm sorry. Okay, wrap around. This is my final wrap around of the horse. I'm going to end this really quick. This is, this is the lightning round here at the end. Sorry, folks. Okay, let me get my notes. Yeah. I actually forgot to talk about the horse. Okay, so the horse's name. Horse's name, right? Is I, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but it's I'm going to spell it out and I'm going to try to say it. It's mm-hmm. I-N-C-I-T-A-T-U-S. In- Incitatus? Hold on. I think it's Incitatus. Incitus? I'm not quite sure. Where's the horse name? Where's the horse? We forgot the Itic- horse. Iticus? Oh, Itic- maybe. Because usually if it's like um. Oh, you're right. Probably. You know more Latin than I do, so you're, you're my default expert. In... Inciatus? In- in- Inciatus? I thought... Inciatus? Insic- Kate- oh, yeah. Incitatus. That, that sounds about right. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going with. I okay. spelled it out for you. You all can look it up later. And you horsey. Can, hor- <laughs> horsey. Horsey. No horsies. <laughs> well, anyways, so real quick, there were two stories about Caligula and horses I want to talk about. The lesser known one is that, and this is something that actually multiple sources talk about. I think we've actually found some archaeological evidence for this event, by the way. Mm-hmm. So apparently when Caligula, before he became emperor, there was a like astrologer or like prophet, you know, the woobity woobity people in Rome yep, who, yep. you know, the pie priests, that sort of thing. Yep. That, right? They would prescribe certain things or mm-hmm, like tell them mm-hmm. the prophecies. Well, there's a prophecy that said that it was as likely for him to cross the Portus Ilius, I believe is the name of the, the sea or wherever this specific sea was. Cause I don't think it's a J. I think it's, I, I guess spell out everything, but it's Ilius. I believe. So Portus Ilius. So it's yeah. Water, whatever. Yep. It was more likely for him to cross this body of water on horseback than to become emperor. Well, he became emperor, so to fulfill said prophecy, he built a pontoon bridge and rode his horse across it to be like, well, I made it come true. <laughs> it's just as likely. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Which is actually pretty, I mean, that's what the kids call based nowadays, so <laughs> that's pretty good. You got you got to give him that. Caligula at least had one good that was pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty give, based. I'll give him that one. Got to give him that one. <laughs> and then, <laughs> based in horse build. But anyway, <laughs> the other story about in Sitica, in whatever, the horsey. Horsey. <laughs> right, I can't pronounce the name of So... Apparently he loved this horse. Just it's the best horse. It's so so beautiful. Mm-hmm. The greatest horse. No one's seen a horse quite like this before. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I find it funny. Just, uh, whatever. <laughs> it, it's it's great. Well, anyways, so Suetonius says that he gave the horse quote besides a stall of marble, a manger of ivory, purple blankets, and a collar of precious stones. He even gave this horse a house. A troop of slaves and furniture for the most elegant entertainment of the guests invited in his name. And it's also said that he planned to make him a consul. Because consuls were one of the major leaders in the Senate at the yeah. time. Blah, blah, blah. But it's it, even Sway Tony's like, I'm not sure that was true. But it's said there's rumors he wanted to make the horse a consul. <laughs> and Cassius Dew, I think, outright says like he tried to or yeah. it didn't work. That story obviously comes a lot later. So it might be something that is just added on. But yeah. yes, Caligula and horses. Didn't want to forget this part. Sorry, folks. How can we forget? We can't forget the horses. Can't forget the horse. <laughs> no more horsing around. <laughs> but, <laughs> But yes, that those are the tales of Caligula and horses. Either way, he was probably very much obsessed with this horse. I believe he had statues made of it at the very least. I, th- I feel like he has attachment issues and he just clings onto something like his horse and then his sister. Or... <laughs> he clinged onto them in many different uh, ways. Uh, yeah. So, horsey. There you go. Horse, horsing around. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Oof. Well, so there you go. That That's my last little bit on horses. I don't think. Do we have anything else now? Is no, there... no, no. I think we got we're it done. Yep, we're, we're absolutely just... done. I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Take us away. Oh, are we starting the next one? No. Oh. We're supposed okay. to say bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>